Good afternoon, everybody from uh, sunny South Cheshire. I hope it is equally sunny where you are. Um, as you know, we've been whizzing in and out of chef's kitchens across the north um, all of yesterday and uh, about halfway through today. We're about to visit uh, the lovely Stephanie Moon. Uh, before that, uh, we're going to play our short hospitality action video. You know that we're just trying to raise just a thousand pounds for our industry charity. We're about halfway there. So please, please, if you can give a few quid, we really appreciate it. Run VT, Spielberg. Holly Hoyle, catering manager. Peter Molar, doorman. Ricardo Oliva, concierge. Ulrich Edwards, concierge assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. You are Georgiou, junior sous chef. Nun Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Himeri Bochkei, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, sushi head chef. Mitchell Collier, duty manager. Anna Grabczewska, public area cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? Hello. Stephanie. Hi, Brian. So good to see you. How are you doing? Brilliant, thank you. Sunny Yorkshire. <laughs> I hope you've got your sun cream on. Well, I've just had to take my sun hat off because there was a bit of a shadow. So I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm on the old lockdown hairdo, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, aren't we all? Yeah, yeah. Whereabouts in Yorkshire are you? Uh, I'm in between Harrogate and York, Brian. Okay, it's looks fantastic. We're, we're very lucky here, very lucky. Good. Shall we get you going? What are you going to be cooking? Right, okay, right, Bob. So we're going to cook. Um, we're actually going to do, uh, we're going to attempt to do four or five dishes, Brian. So we've got a lot to wow. do here. First thing we're going to cook is this beautiful trout. Now, I'm going to do it slightly differently. So I, actually, I say I'm going to cook it. This one, I'm actually not going to cook. Uh, I cure it. So I've got some cling film here. And I'm going to pop the cling film down onto the bench. <clears throat> and what I've done, Brian, with my trout, this trout is from Hodgson's of Hartlepool. Alan and the guys up there, I've filleted my trout. And what I'm going to do with it is make a light cure. Now, this is a herb masterclass. And all the herbs yep. today come from Herbs Unlimited at Sand Hutton near Thirsk. And the very first herb that I'm going to use, Brian, is a fantastic herb. I guess you'll know this one, lemon verbena. It's oh, lemon yeah. Citrusy. It's what the Spaniards brought over at the Armada. It's what the Victorians made soap out of. And now Michelin chefs are making uh, panna cottas out of this. You know, it's an amazing herb. So what I'm going to do with that herb is I've popped it in my thermo mix and I've made an equal mix of sugar and salt. Did it. So what we've got here is in essence some bright green lemon verbena sugar salt cure. So you pop it onto your cling film and then lay the fillet of trout over the top and then pop the rest of the lemon verbena cure on the trout. And then quite simply roll this up. And if you don't like trout, you could use salmon. And um, you know, that's another great fish you could use. And then you basically pop that in your fridge for about two hours for a thin piece of trout like that. And what you end off with is something that looks like this. A little bit green, That's a little quick. bit slimy. <laughs> but don't worry, because all that green slime is the moisture coming out of the trout. Now, I've got some cold water here. It's 
So my trout is now cured. So that took about two hours. This is the one I made earlier. But um, you'll see that the fish is phenomenal. I think, Brian, if you like sushi or if you like that sort of thing, this is the dish for you because it's very fresh. The lemon, I can, it's a, it's a shame we've not got smell of vision Brian. <laughs> the lemon is smelling really, really good. So, I think what, you, what you've done there has been really empathetic with the fish, isn't it? Yeah. You've not murdered it. No, I've not really messed about with it. I've just kept it very fresh, very seasonal. Uh, lemon verbena is really, really good at the moment, Brian. It's amazing. I know Phil and the guys up at Herbs Unlimited, they've got acres of it. So uh, if any chefs, Phil was telling me, if any chefs want to... Uh, to buy any of the herbs he's doing a deal at the minute and okay. he's doing these big bags of herbs five big bags of herbs and a plummet of edible flowers and um a chart telling you all the different herbs that they do is five pounds so you go on the website herbs unlimited and it's a great way for chefs to have a bit of a play while they're in lockdown a bit bored Let's have a bit of a play and, and, and enjoy ourselves. Okay. So, Steph, we've got a question coming in from Paul Fogarty. Right, yeah. It says, if you use sea trout, how much longer should he cure it for? I guess uh, sea trout's that bit thicker. Obviously a lot bigger um, and a lot more expensive, but I would say yeah. probably about six hours to a day in the fridge, turning it a couple of times, and you'll end off with something that looks like this. So this is our trout here. It's cured, it's light, it's kind of sushi-like, really mm. beautiful. The lemon verbena is really coming through. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna finish off our dish and we're using celeriac. So celeriac, celeriac is great when you make it as a remoulade so we're going yeah. to just make that into a remoulade using another herb because this is a herb master class we've got here some bronze fennel now what do you think of that brian i love it we, we actually grow a little bit at the school but it's great yeah yeah Bronze fennel is one of my favourite herbs. And all I've done with the bronze fennel is I've ripped it from the stem. And this, if you like aniseed, if you like perno, bronze fennel is a really, really great thing to try. Pop that into our remoulade. Mix that round. So in there we've got celeriac. We've got some pickled kohlrabi. We've got some whole grain mustard we've got the fennel bronze fennel and that i've just fashioned that into a circle shape using a cutter keep it nice and neat and then on the top we pop our lemon the beaner mind-blowing hodgson's trout and that lemony flavor brian is really coming good it's smelling insane at the minute well, just teasing now because we can't smell it <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> um this time the word master class we're going to top this with this here's a question for you brian do you know what this is this uh, i'm going to claim my eyesight well it looks a bit like wild garlic from afar but actually yeah. it's detander no don't know is it's like Yorkshire wasabi, this stuff. It's red hot <laughs> and it, it's punchy, really, really punchy. Okay. So all I've done with the detander is I've made it into a mayonnaise because the one thing the dish needs now is just a little bit of light mayo. So I'm just going to dot that here and there like so. So deliciously Yorkshire have posted Steph said so looking good Steph so they obviously like your lockdown hair. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to Alison, the guys at Deliciously Yorkshire. 
They're an amazing bunch. They do fantastic work promoting the best suppliers in Yorkshire, and many of which I know. So uh, really, really good. Okay, Some guy so, called Stuart McLeod saying a great demo, Steph. Stuart, wow, what a what a guy! <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> we missed Stuart. We were supposed to be doing the um, down at Warwick University, the judging for Tuco, and uh, it got cancelled. So uh, I'm, I'll miss my mate Stuart. Right, um, he's a good guy. I've done a lot of judging with him. He's a great guy, Stuart. Uh, the next thing we're going to add is we've got here, even though we're really showcasing herbs, I work at a hotel <laughs> called Wooden Park, it's in Harrogate, and they have got the most amazing herb garden vegetables. I'm going to be using a bit of rhubarb later, but look at that, kohlrabi. Now, if you peel this, yeah. you can eat this like an apple, it's that sweet. So I'm going to use my kohlrabi. Um, and lightly pickle it, which I've got here. So our dish is really coming together now, ready for our first dish. So we're just going to finish this up. So we've got Kirsty Casson. Great to see you, Steph. Great Cranmer woman, Joe. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. I thought Joe had fainted before because we got a shot of the sky. <laughs> That's all the way from Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all the way from Scotland. Okay, Brian. So we're going to garnish with a few edible flowers, not too many because I want to save some for later. But I've got here some blue cornflower. That is an immense edible flower. Absolutely gorgeous. And I've got here some chive flower which obviously is okay. a little bit onion-y, so we don't want that many of those, just a few of those. And our dish is ready to serve. So first one down, one down, that's the lemon verbena cured trout with the um, celeriac fennel, bronze fennel remoulade. I'll pop that down here. Lovely, well done, chef. Yeah, nice one. Ready for our next dish. I'll just get the ingredients. So I'm just honed in on the white wine and the glass. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> I said I've just honed in on the white wine and the glass. Oh, uh, well, now this wine, I must tell you, Brian, this wine, I know this wine very well. It's an amazing wine. I volunteer and I go and I help pick the grapes um, at Junesford. And this is their Bacchus. So cheers to Ian and Mandy. They dropped this round earlier. <laughs> cheers. Um, Caroline you. Bell says great stuff. <laughs> okay, guys. So ready for our next dish. Okay. So we're going to do Soane's chicken. <laughs> right. So I've got here a lot of ingredients, and I just want to point out what I've brought here. So we've got here some raw cider apple vinegar with honey. We've got some soy sauce. We've got some smoked paprika, chili pepper, cinnamon stick. We're in Yorker. Hendo's relish. So, sorry, Stan. sorry for interrupting, Steph. Yeah, no I just way. want to tell you that, that Karen is watching from Australia. Wow. Karen Besterfeld. Fantastic. Flip it, eh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, well, Karen, we're using some date molasses here as well. So yeah. what we're making, Brian, with all these different ingredients, I've warmed them up. And what that makes is a barbecue glaze. And yeah. for the barbecue, I'm doing a chicken dish, which I've actually got in. I'm just going to check it's cooked, but it could be. We're using orange thyme. Now, it's flowering at the minute. The heady sort of smell of orange is immense. Really, really good. So I've marinated my chicken with orange thyme. 
So here it is in the orange thyme marinade, all ready to go. Let's pop it on the barbie. And as if by magic, the system works. We've got two ready cooked. So let's just pop those on there. Like so. Okay, so our orange thyme marinated chicken is cooked. Now I just want to check it's cooked. Just give that a quick probe. What we're looking for is 75 degrees. That's what we want. Especially with chicken on a barbecue, you can't mess around. Karen, she's in, in Australia, she'll know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> good. We're at the right temperature. In fact, we're one degree over, so that's good news. Okay, so to go with our chicken, for our second dish, this one's a simple one, but Soane's chicken, what I couldn't believe about this chicken, look at this guys, my dog is here. This is Honey, one of my dogs, I've got two dogs, and Honey is not leaving my side as we're doing this. No. She's like my sous chef. Look at the size of that chicken thigh, you just can't believe that is a beautiful, beautiful piece of chicken. So Soane's chicken in Driffield, Amazing stuff. Loving it. Okay, quick wash of the hands. So Yorkshire Rapeseed Oil have been making some comments as well, and apparently they love that poultry as well. Yeah, amazing stuff. And you know what, guys? Yorkshire Rapeseed Oil. I am a huge fan of their rapeseed oil. And I saw yesterday on the... On, I was watching the chefs yesterday, and I saw that they'd uh, made a few comments, and I thought, Damn, I haven't got any of their oil in. I thought they're one of their competitors. So uh, this is uh, Wharf Valley rapeseed oil. But I know all the olive oil, rapeseed oil guys in Yorkshire. They're a big family. They all get on. So I don't think they'll mind too much. But I use their oil quite a lot. Okay, guys. So our chicken. We're going to bling this up with a few edible flowers. This time we're going to use a few violas. Really nice, simple dish. I just want to make the most of that chicken. That's what this is all about. So, Soane's chicken. Lovely. Soane's poultry are saying they wish they could smell that. Now, so I they're watching what, as well. It's great. And I know cooking on the bone, chicken on the bone, it's the way forward. It really, really is. Yeah. Okay, we're all, we're okay all another wrong. question, Steph. Yeah, fire away. Kirsty Caston wants to know where we can get the orange thyme from. Okay, Kirsty, you need to go to Herbs Unlimited. Um, and can you see me, guys? No, we can hear you though. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there you go. Herbs Unlimited, and ask them for their chef's special mystery box. It's called a mystery box, and it's a fiver. So. Uh, I know Philip has got fields of herbs at the minute, and mm. during lockdown, all those chefs that normally buy in our restaurants and hotels and cafes, we need to be supporting our local companies now with this. Yeah. Okay, guys. So we're going to cook on, ready for our next quick wipe down, ready for our next dish. So now we're back to Mr. Hodgson's fish. There you go. Alan. Alan. Paul's, sorry, Paul's just put a link in there to the website. Oops. Sorry, Brian. Paul's just put a link into Herbs Unlimited. Fantastic. If anybody needs it, it's there. Yeah, Steph, can I just can I just explain? Sorry if, if I interrupt you. When the questions come up, it blocks yeah, a bit of the screen out, so I try to read them out fairly quickly. Yeah. Okay. Brian. Okay. Okay, Brian. Yep. Next thing we're gonna go with is our monkfish. Now I'm making a tandoori style of monkfish. 
So here's my monkey fish. Look at that absolute beauty. Really lovely. And all I'm going to do is cut that straight down. For me, I actually like to cook the fish on the bone. I think you get an immense flavour from cooking it like this. So, it's interesting because obviously you did that with the chicken as well and saying that cooking on the bone is the way forward. I think it, it, it's much better yeah, flavour, it isn't it? It is much better flavour, right. And the beauty of the flavour when you do cook on the bone, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a chicken breast, and, you know, that sort of thing cooked on a barbie as well. But this, I think, on the bone is great for barbecue food. It's fantastic. So we've got another great Yorkshire product here. This is Longley Farm. Bit of natural yogurt. And we're going to add some spices. This is a masala spice. A little bit. Carefully of, measured out. A bit of, yep. Yeah, randomly measured out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tablespoon, that, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Jack Jacqueline Heaton. Love the sound of the edible flowers for my cakes. Is Thanks. that the same link as the herbs? Yes, it will be, Jacqueline. And happy birthday. Jackie, if you're wanting to make the edible herbs, uh, the edible flowers, just look at these bad boys. If you're Here making you a cake, I would avoid the chive one. Yeah. But this is immense. This is like a smack in the face with Ribena. It's black currant sage flower. Yes. Unbelievable. Boom. Black yeah. currant. Straight in there. Okay. Okay, guys. So our marinade is ready. We've got in here chili, ginger, garlic, uh, turmeric, masala, masala spices. And now I'm just going to add my. Um, Big monkfish steaks. And you know what, guys? When you ask Alan Hodgson for a prawn, that's what he sends you. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> mental. I love it. Love it. So I've just peeled these. And all I've done is run my knife along the, the back, remove the vein, and then marinate those as well. So those are going in. So I marinated these overnight. So Steph, I'm going to read this out. Michael Wilkinson says, doing Yorkshire proud as always. Well, love, Matty, the, love the fish you can get from Alan. You won't believe this, everybody. I was walking in the next village and I bumped into Matty. Matty is the head chef of Rudding Park. And uh, Matty and I go back years and uh, and I've known him for years. I went to his wedding. He's been to mine. We're, we're good friends. And uh, thanks for that, Matt. Right, this is going to go on the barbie. I'm changing barbecue here. So we're going to pop the fish on the broil king. Like so. Did you put any oil on that fish, or is it just the, the tandoori? A little bit, uh, Brian. In the mix, sorry, a little bit of oil. Yeah, Not okay. Too much. Okay, guys. All righty. So, to go with our monkfish, I've just realized I marinated the monkfish and I forgot to tell you about this stuff, which is what was in the monkfish, or it should have been. This is anise hyssop. Okay. Now, anise is one of those herbs. It's not aniseed and it's not hyssop. It's actually an English herb. It's called anise hyssop because it tastes like aniseed and it tastes a bit like hyssop. So if you've never tried it, this is amazing. You can eat it raw. It tastes like, I can taste the aniseed and the hyssop now. Really, really good. So that was in the monkfish and I'm also... Just change boards. You move out the way, honey. You move out the way. Good girl. All right. So, clean board. Anise hyssop. 
going to pop those leaves on my chopping board. I think this would even wilt down a bit like spinach. It's, yeah. I think it would be amazing. So, our anise is up. We're just going to finely chop like so. That's enough. Pop that in a bowl. And in here, we've got here some tomato concasse or diced tomato without the skin. We've also got some chopped shallot that's going in as well. And something like this, when you're making a salsa, you don't want the, uh, the very sharp um, sort of raw onion pit. Shallots a lot milder and a lot nicer, subtler way of doing it. And we're going to add a bit of chopped fresh chili in there as well. So, Steph, you said that you you were watching some of the chefs yesterday, watching some of the Dems. What do you think of the spirit that this has created? You know what, Brian? We all know our industry is an amazing industry. It really is. I think, and I, we're we're all suffering now. We're all we're all feeling it because, and I know you guys are raising money for hospitality action. And Thank you. Anybody who's out there who wants to donate, even if you get a, a fiver's worth of herbs from Philip and then get a fiver's worth of uh, hospitality action, you're going to be helping a lot of people in the hospitality industry, often who are quite low paid. And I think it's a brilliant thing to do. We're, you know, as a nation, we're getting through this, aren't we? But I love the fact that Sean and, uh, and Jackie... You know they, they've put this on i think it's it's and you know you guys are all helping i think it's brilliant really really good well okay, guys. So, our our plate is ready for our fish but let's just have a quick look at our fish that's ready to turn over looking good the smell once again the smell is really good Right, let's get this fish over. Okay. And get those prawns. Looking good. Okay. And we've got here, it's a bit hot this. I've got in here a little pan. And in here, I've used sweet potato, and this herb is a herb, I've tried this herb a few times, but I've never really, really fallen in love with it as a herb. But actually now, I can honestly say, I think this is immense. It's called mace. Now, okay. I think of mace, and I think that's something you spray in someone's eyes, or uh, <laughs> the cob, but it's neither of those. It's an immense herb. It's really, really good. It's a kind of a cross between sort of a bit rosemary, a little bit sort of, you know, it's quite a, a robust herb. It can, uh, it can take some welly, which is a good job because what done is with the mace, I roasted the mace with the potatoes, just the sweet potatoes, mace, a little bit of butter, and just roasted it on the barbecue in my little pan and that smells lovely that's nice okay let's i'm starting to wonder where you go on your nights out that you need to carry some mace with you <laughs> oh dear yeah the streets of harrogate they're a dangerous place <laughs> yeah okay okay brian so, so graham now. mitchell has made a comment sorry steph yeah He's just saying that I think that it's really united a nation of chefs to show how small our community really is with this event. I know Graham's been watching just about every dem, I think, over the festival. I love it. I love the fact that there's the 
young chefs, old chefs, you know, there's yeah. a real need for chefs. There's chefs who are working in restaurants, cafes, all sorts of things. And that, that's what it's all about. You know, hospitality, we are hospitable by the nature of our, our job. That's what we do. And this, you know, it's really quite exciting. Okay, Bry, so yep. tandoori milk fish. Whoa, smelling good. And look at them prawns, Bry. We've got to get one of them on. Maybe even two. Boom. Look at them. Right. So, as, as you know, Steph, Craig is sitting behind the desk, sort of <laughs> managing the live streams, and he's just saying, the chefs that have taken on new skills through this. Yeah. So I, th I think he wants to become a TV producer now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think he's done a fantastic job, and I know we had a few challenges yeah. earlier on, but uh, it yeah. really, really has. It's it's brilliant, brilliant to see. So okay, guys. So our monkfish and our king prawns with our mace roast sweet potato. I'm going to move that now. How are we doing for time, Brian? Have we got time for another dish or two? Yeah, I think you got another sort of uh, five to ten minutes, something like that. Okay, I'll crack on. <laughs> I think I think what you've done there, cooking that monkfish on the bone, a lot of people would be nervous about cooking fish on the barbecue because um, it's delicate. But actually, monkfish is that bit more robust. Uh, it's a great fish. It's a, yeah, it's a great fish to if you've never cooked fish on the barbie, monkfish is a superb one to start mm. with. It really, really is. Really is. Okay, so uh, all right, just quick tidy up here, Brian. Yeah, that's fine. We were just saying that uh, there's a lot of families have eaten very well as a result of this festival, you know, because <laughs> if you're doing four or five dishes, it's got to be eaten somewhere, hasn't it? Oh, dear me, we're, we're, we're definitely. Uh, going to eat well tonight for sure that monkfish well right okay so our next dish quick wipe down oh our next dish is lamb now this is from uh, fodder which is a local farm shop local to here um and it's a fantastic farm shop they do great great work supporting yorkshire farmers and this is like all the rest, you know, classic summer lamb, absolutely beautiful. And what I've done with that is I've got it here with some lovage. Now, yeah. if you've never tried, Joe, would you just pass me the lovage? If you've never tried lovage before, lovage and lamb is a really, really good combo. It's, uh, it's a member of the celery family. It's Fresh, vibrant, goes instead of mint. Everybody does lamb and mint, and don't get yeah. me wrong, I love lamb and mint. And in fact, I've sort of done it a little bit myself. You do get that bit of a tang from Lovage, don't you? It's it has got a bit of character. Joe's just gone running off to get me a plate for some reason. <laughs> I've not got my plate. Here we go. Right, so, so with our lamb and lovage, what I've got is I've made a pesto with the lovage, and I'm using some uh, Spielman asparagus. Just, all I've done with this asparagus. And we actually grow this at Rudding Park as well. But this is what everybody can buy now. So your asparagus always has a bend. Yeah. The, and that's the tender bit that you want to barbecue. And this is the woody bit that you want to uh, put in your stocks, etc. Okay, guys. So our lamb. Our lamb is actually ready because I park up some earlier. And what you can see, I've just popped a little tinfoil over the uh, over the bone to keep it nice and clean, because the devil is in the detail, as we know. Yeah. And the little, what I've done with the lovage is marinate that 
in with the lamb. So, you know, it's got that lovely, lovely flavor. Okay, guys. So, next thing. Luggage. Here's the leaves. Here it is on the stem. It just sounds great, doesn't it? Luggage. You just want yeah. to. Yeah. Right. So, we have blitzed our luggage down and we have made a pesto using a few different ingredients. So, we've got some. Uh, Ground nuts, you could use uh, pine nuts, almonds, anything, garlic. And we're just going to drizzle that over our luggage, our, over our lamb. We've also, honey is very interested about something in the bottom of this. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, I must say, that's the first time I've ever done a cookery demo with my dog. But there you go. <laughs> I think I think ours will be getting in on the act when I do mine at six o'clock. Nice one, nice one, Brian. New potatoes. Now all I've done with this, and I've just used the ordinary mint. Um, I know the guys over at Herbs they've got pineapple mint, apple mint, chocolate mint, but I've just used the ordinary garden mint for this particular dish with the new potatoes. Keep it nice and simple. And our asparagus is ready. So I'm just going to pop that. And a fun foodie fact for those watching. I don't know if anyone can tell me which way asparagus points in the field. Which way? It's not up. <laughs> which, which way asparagus points when it's growing in the field? Mm, don't. What points? Surely. <laughs> okay, well, no, not, not upwards. <laughs> Okay, so there's our lamb with our lovage and asparagus. And our very last dish, which is very, very quick. Joe, can you just... We're just going to use the Prince Albert. It's an interesting name. Yeah. This is... Uh... You know what? I forgot to put the fine petal. Right, just while I'm doing this, this cheese is from Shepherd's Purse near Thirsk. Yeah. And I just want to pop some of that on because these guys are doing an amazing thing. They've changed the pack size of their cheese to uh, so it's easy for people to deal with, small portion, and it's at a real bargain price at the minute because. Like all farmers, you can't turn. If your sheep is milking, that milk's got to come and it's got to go somewhere. So <laughs> yeah. let's go our farmers and buy some fettle cheese. Okay, guys. Now we're finishing with Rudding Park. And this, Bry, is Prince Albert. This is right. an outdoor rhubarb. Amazing stuff. And just very, very quickly, all I'm going to do is cut it into batons like so pop it on a tray there we go and then we're just going to cover that with some woodruff now this herb a little bit different or i think it's quite bitter and quite quite grainy doesn't taste very nice but when you cook it the flavor is immense i know a lot of uh, michelin star chefs are putting it on their menus with things woodruff all i've done is i've popped it on top of my rhubarb and then sprinkle quite a bit of sugar and then add there it is add some water and also add a bit of this stuff. Rhubarb gin. That's from our friends at Slingsby. So I just want to read this out, Steph, from Delicious Elite. Oh, easy for me to say. 
deliciously Yorkshire. Uh -huh. They're saying that Shepherd's Purse brought forward the launch of its fettle in a bid to keep the orders flowing for its milk suppliers. So what, that is actually what I was trying to say, but made a bit of a hash on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Really. Hey, we're all working together, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Bry, we're on the home run now. We're nearly done. So I've right. got my rhubarb. I've cooked it. I actually cooked this in the oven, 180 for about eight, eight to ten minutes. It's soft. It's kept its shape. It's tender, and it, the smell of the woodruff is really, really good. So, what we're going to do? Just a quick tidy up. Honey, can you leave that alone? So while you're doing that, I'll prove how, how sad I am in that as, asparagus actually points magnetic north in, a, in the field. Really? You'd think it might bend towards the sun, but it doesn't. It points magnetic north. Well, I've learned something there, Bri. Every day is a school I, day. I right? need to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you need to come and have a look at the kitchen garden at Rudding, Bry. I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. So we're going to take our rhubarb, and we're going to finish our dish with our poached rhubarb. Joe, can you get the sorbet? We've got some sorbet coming. And for the sorbet, Bry, I use sweet Sicily. I'll just grab the sweet Sicily. Quite literally, I've been all around the herb garden with, with all these herbs that you've been using. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is sweet Sicily, Brian. If you've never seen it before, it's fern-like, it's sweet. It goes amazingly well with rhubarb. So with the woodruff in the poaching of the rhubarb and the sweet Sicily in the sorbet, This is what you want on a hot day like this. Something nice and steady. Yeah. And we're going to finish that. We really are nearly done now. With a little bit of parking crumb. Because it's always nice to have a bit of a crunch. And Brilliant. Brilliant combination. Then we're going to pop a couple of those. I know it sounds strange, but... Blackcurrant sage, the actual flower, is is really really. It's, it doesn't taste much like sage. It's the uh, it's the blackcurrant flavour that you get. Okay, guys. So just to recap: monkfish, king prawns, Hodgson's fish, with the mace, um, sweet potato, and the anise hyssop in there. Then we have the fodder lamb with the fine fettle cheese, mint in the new potatoes, charbroiled spielman asparagus, and the lovage, lovage pesto. That's boom, I can, I can really smell that. Boom. <laughs> yeah. My, I'm, I'm gonna be diving into this the minute we finish. This is the Sones chicken, and it's got that barbecue flavor, that orange thyme flavor, really, really lovely. Then the, uh, the trout, the cured trout, with the lemon verbena and the bronze fennel. And last, Woodruff poached rhubarb, parking crumb, and the sweet Sicily sorbet. Now, all I need to do now, I'd, I'd like to of raise course. a cake to the guys <laughs> at the Virtual Northern Food Festival, Craig and Sean and Jackie, Yourself, Brian, I know you've been doing this all day yesterday as well. Really well done. Everything you're doing, amazing. Let's keep supporting our local producers and really well done. Thank you. Cheers, Steph. Cheers. Um, well, while you have a, sw a swig there, we've got about a minute or two before we need to get out the studio, so to speak. But okay. obviously you mentioned hospitality action before and, you know, it's it's a small our industry charity and there's so many people in need at the moment. Uh, we, we literally have got the begging bowl out just looking for small donations from yeah, people. We, um, you know, last year, Bri, um, 
we we did um, an event at Wooding Park and we raised a phenomenal amount of money yeah. and it was for hospitality action and I know now our I think it's it's not important how much we raise it's important that everybody just puts you know if you could give a fiver amazing the guys at hospitality action will be grateful because I know that that money will go to the right place you're right and I think it's just a big shout out to and I'm, I'm sorry if I miss anybody but obviously to to my mates Dawn Kev Caroline Stephen oh, Martin Tom who are all on the board of Northern Hospitality Action and, and there are mates working for us yeah very much so and you know when you know any chefs who are watching this who are thinking about having an event for hospitality action they support you all the way through it they're really helpful and you know that's what it's all about let's let's keep them going because that's what it's all about okay chef lovely to see you thank you for all that hard hospitality action hard work. Is a force for good we offer lifelines to people who work or have worked in hospitality and find themselves in difficulty or crisis. We help people set their lives back on track. But not all of our stories have happy endings. For April, a secondary cancer diagnosis meant the best we could do for her was to take any financial worries off her mind. I was diagnosed summer of 2018 with sarcoma cancer and attend the uh, Christie Hospital here in Manchester and from there I've been on a journey with various chemo treatments and an operation. Oh, I've known about hospitality actually for over 10 years. They've been very, very good to me. They have um, given me little Christmas presents. Uh, I came back on my holiday and I had a birthday present from them and a birthday card, which really surprised me. It was a nice little touch. Uh, I've been given a warming grant for heating and, and I've been given different amounts of money uh, at different times throughout the year. With VHA's help, I've been able to recently take a little trip down to London uh, a couple of weeks ago. And with that, I was able to sort of meet up with my friends, go out. We went to the West End, we went and seen the Tina Turner musical. And we had fun, you know, it doesn't take that much sort of to be with your friends and sort of having that sort of tranquility and fun. It's less pressure um, to it's knowing that um, next month there'll be a sum coming in there too and that'll pay off all the utility bills. So uh, it's it's a safety net that's there and I'm very, very grateful that it's there that I'm able to use it. Whatever life throws at you, isn't it great to know somebody's got your back when the going gets tough? Help us to help people like April, people like you. Hospitality Action, we've got you.